Good evening. Praise God. Praise God, everybody. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you are having a blessed evening. Um, I don't just get on here anymore and ask you all know that. So God bless you. It's been a minute, a hot minute, right? Praise God. Praise God. So this teaching, I want you to go ahead, press tag, press share, um, and just walk with me because I got to teach this. I can't preach this. I got to teach this. Okay. So basically, this is my title. My title is Territorial Demons. Demonic quarters are opening everywhere. The church is not aware of this, you know, because we, we so, as a church, we're so busy bickering, competition, you know, you know, all this other stuff. And yet people are dying. And God says the reason why people are dying is because the church is not addressing demons, you know, which I don't understand because if you really look at the whole New Testament, that's all they dealt with was demons. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And so basically what God is saying is that the church is not, you're not coming together and praying. You know, we're going to take an example and I'm going to try not to go off here. And I want to go ahead and do a disclaimer right now. I'm not trying to bash anybody, but if the shoe fit, lace it up, wear it, whatever. Hallelujah. And so in Chicago, all right, I, I'm going to name the cities right now for you, the major cities, Chicago, Atlanta, L.A., also different countries, London, New York. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Orlando. I just found out that out actually being here. So what am I saying? These are all major cities that have demonic quarters that are open but i'm gonna go ahead and teach this thing praise god okay so bear with me i have a lot written down and so after this you're going to understand what i'm talking about so while i'm getting all the information together just to smooth and go along with what i want you to do is to be writing some things down i'm going to give you solutions on how to stop excuse me what's going on in each city in each city, you know, I told you all about a book. It's called Frankie Peretti, Piercing the Darkness. It's a thick book. Oh, it's way over there. I can't, I'm not even going to get it. But it's a thick book, but it talks about territories. Okay, you ever notice that when you go on vacay, like some of you like to do, you feel so light and, and, and you like the scenery and it's so relaxing and calm? That's because that area is actually went over by the saints. But anytime you go to Chicago or metropolitan Atlanta or, or anywhere where there's a lot of crime. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Oakland, Oakland, California. Come on, somebody. LA, you're going to feel the pressure of those demons because they're running things. So we're talking about territorial demons, but hold on. They didn't just get here. The, these are portals that are being opened by these demons and by witches and warlocks that are actually, some of them are in the church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So let me go ahead and teach this thing the way I need to. So how do you get rid of this? You got to come to, on together in one accord. And you see, the enemy is so slick. He got everybody bickering until the church can't stand to be together. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You, you make a blow when fivefold is working. The fivefold ministry, apostle, prophets, pastors, preachers, teachers. Y'all not doing that. Church not doing that. The church don't want the prophets in unless they can control the prophets. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Then the pastors, that's my church. That's not your church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me go ahead and, and teach this thing the way I need to. Praise God. Go ahead and bear with me. It's a lot of information. Okay. All right. So, and I'm going to, all right. So we're going to start with, okay, hold on. All right. So let's talk, let, let's start with what are portals, Okay. Portals are ancient doors and ancient gates. You know how I always talk about your eye gate, whatever you entertain. Come on, somebody, y'all call it entertainment, but you don't understand. It's entering in, tame, contain, mutt. That's why you got to watch what you listen to. You got to watch what you hear. So it's almost like that. They, these are gates. These are spiritual gates, by the way. Okay, so let me go ahead and read. Ancient gates or doors are portals of access established by God from the third heaven to earth. They're also obstructed by demonic interference in which angels travel from the heaven and back again while provisions are delivered, transportation, translation, and revelation are given to men. That's just like when you're in services. When you're in service and think about it, I don't know how you got to usher in. I don't like when they say that, but let's say you're getting ready to worship. What happens? The Holy Spirit comes. But what you don't understand is that before the Holy Spirit really comes, the angels come down and they prepare 
the atmosphere. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. They prepare the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come. Well, that's the same thing about these porters. Let me continue. In Daniel 10, 13, he is informed that the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding, standing opposite the angel for 21 days. Michael, one of the chief princess angels, came to help fight through the porter in the demonic land of Babylon to give Daniel understanding. So you remember when he said it took him 21 days? That's because they was fighting through the portals. Now, now porters are for angels, demons, you understand? That's why the spiritual war is going on right now. You see, we're just living our little world, going to work, going to church, you know, going to the movies, playing golf, whatever the case. But the angels and the demons are fighting 24-7. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why God says, I, 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 I pray that you meditate day and night. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. That's why we're supposed to pray, not just for ourselves, but for our angels. You have angels. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, surrounding you 24-7 a day. And some of you don't even use your angels. Oh, hallelujah. You're wondering why the atmosphere is not changing because you ain't using your angels. Let me continue because I'm getting a little happy. Hallelujah. In the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 to 17, the story of Jacob's dream is recorded. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching the heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Now, this is in Genesis 28 and 12. That's why I said, go ahead, get your pen, record some of this so you can go back and see it. Because I just don't want to give you something without giving you scripture. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Now, in the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 to 17, the story of Jacob's dream is recorded. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching the heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. I'm reading that again. In verse 13, God is standing at the top of the ladder, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father um, Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the land in which you lie, I will give it to you and your descendants. These verses are a wonderful account of how God reveals a portal in dream to a man, a prophecy, Jacob's destiny to him. Once in praise and worship at church, you see portals opening. If you really tap in the spirit, you can feel it. One day, and I have to tell this story, one day I was in church, and, and it was so crazy because, and I'm going to be very transparent as I always am, the praise and worship leader, her and I just really didn't, well, I had told a prophecy to her husband, and her husband ended up closing the church. So I think she had that against me because he believed it, but guess what? It ended up panning out for him because he ended up on TV and doing some major things. But she never quite understood because you know, sometimes I think women and men get in the flesh like, oh, that's the one that did it, as if I took her first ladyship away. So anyway, she ended up being the praise and worship leader at the church that I was going to. And when I was fellowshipped in, she wouldn't, she wouldn't even shake my hand. It was crazy. So I'm looking at her on the top, at, at, you know, on the stage worshiping. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. You know how we talk to ourselves? I was like, God, how am I supposed to believe that this woman is real when she don't even like me? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you what God challenged me one day. He said, Deanna. Don't worry about her. Why don't you press? Press in like never before. Let me tell y'all what happened that day. I pressed in like never before. That is the first time I ever saw this. I literally saw angels coming down. And I was so in awe until I went higher and higher and higher. And the higher I went, the more I began to worship, the more I began to cry. I mean, I, I didn't even I didn't even know where I was at one point. Cause I knew I was at church, but you know, the presence of God will overwhelm you. The presence of God will overtake you. So long story short. Do you know the end of that service? That woman actually came up to me and she said, I love the way you worship. And I was looking because like, okay, God, she don't even like me. But, but listen to this. While I was obedient, God was working in me through worship and he was working in her to watch me. Y'all hear what I just said. So it's, it's very important to be obedient. It's very important because guess what? These portals are opening. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But you got to move. If I had been stubborn and say, nah, I'm not worshiping because of her, because of her. I'm saying something because some of you not understanding. That's why some of your blessings are being held up because you're looking at the person. Oh, I don't like them. Oh, I've had a situation with them. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It could be me. You know how many people have a problem with me just because of who I am and what I say and what I preach and what I teach. Not even understanding that I might be a blessing. Hold on. In the spirit and not in the physical. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So you have to understand how porters are provision, which is my next subject. In Psalm 78, 23, 25, God opened the doors of heaven and fed the Hebrews in the desert the food of angels. You know, manna. Oh, come on, somebody. How did God do that? Now, hold on. 
It was a portal that was open because they sure didn't reach up to heaven and, oh God, I'm going to take some manna. The manna rained down on them. That was a portal, you guys. Hallelujah. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. All right, let's talk about Ezekiel, the porters opened. Now it came about in the 13th year of the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river of Chabar among the exiles, I saw the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. So how is it important? How important is it for you to be in the spirit of God so you can understand the portals? That's why the church don't understand. You know, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but I, I have to ask myself about Chicago and other cities. How is it? that the pastors, the leaders, haven't gotten together. God, what should we do? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm not trying to bash. I'm not trying to be messy. I'm just telling the truth. How is it? Because I'm going to tell you right now, since I've been here in Orlando, hallelujah, especially in this area, now at first things was happening. That's how I knew that my anointing was strong. I mean, it was some weird things happening on right on the street, truth be told. But I, I wrote, and I have it in my Bible, I wrote City of Orlando, Community of Orlando, police of Orlando. I, I wrote everything down and I pray over it every day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this community. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everything the whole Orlando area, Father God. I say in the name of Jesus that you say, you have to call him back to his word, that you say everywhere my foot tread, then that means that I have control and authority. Luke 10, 19, come on somebody, hallelujah. If something is going on in your area and your neighborhood and your city and your state, then guess what? You're the problem, hallelujah. And you got the answer. Oh, come on somebody, I'm just being honest with you. So, 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 let's talk about Chicago again. Pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle, where you at? I'm going to shut up, continue, continue this. Okay, so the hand of the Lord was on me there. And he said to me, get up, go out to the plain. And there I will speak to you. So I got up and went out to the plain and behold, the glory of the Lord was standing there like the glory I saw by the river Shabar. And I fell on my face. This is Ezekiel 3, 22 and 23. So it's so important for you to be in the spiritual room so you can see. You know, one day I was in Sacramento. And I saw this big old territorial demon just sitting on the church. It's like he owned it. And I'm not kidding. And that area, it was definitely, definitely an area of crime, robbery, all kind of things. And I could never understand. And I have to be honest. I kept asking God the same thing that I'm asking about Chicago. I say, God, how is it that church is blessed and yet they can't take control of this area? you got to stay pure. That's the only way you can do it. How do you stay pure? You can't do things that is not of God and think that the spirit of God can flow through you and you can heal, deliver, lay hands, cast out demons. That's just not going to happen, church. I'm sorry. And we got too many people trying to do it. I'm sorry. That doesn't happen unless you are purified and tried. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You, you cannot. You cannot cast out demons. You cannot lay hands and heal and deliver. Oh, hallelujah. He says, prayers of the righteous avail it much. Well, that's the same thing with laying on hands. You got to be right. I didn't say perfect. You got to be right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's continue to talk about portals over geographical locations. Habakkuk, in the second chapter of Habakkuk, we see the prophet faithful to watch and see what the Lord will say to him. And what the Lord says and speak to write it down. Habakkuk is waiting at the place where it faithfully goes and pray and wait on the Lord. Often God will establish a portal over a geographical location after long prayer supplication has been made faithful by the servant of God. You have to be consistent, consistent. You can't pray one day and not pray the next. And, and that's what people are not doing. You're not being consistent. I'm not saying you don't love God, but you're not being consistent. So when things are not changing, that means you're not being consistent. And then a lot of people get frustrated. Well, God, I've been praying. I've been praying, but nothing's happening. He says, unless you have faith. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me continue. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set my up on the tower and will watch to see what he was saying to me and what I will answer when I am approved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run. Read it. Come on, somebody. And that was Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. You see, porters can be established in a certain geographical location. Some are known today in the earth, such as Jerusalem. Why do you think all that's fighting over there? Those are porters, and that's not only that, that's a holy city. Many Christians who travel to Jerusalem report being flooded with revelation of things from God, supernatural experiences such as dreams, visions, transportations back and forward in time. Now, let's talk about that. I've had, 
I don't know how many, I, I would, maybe 10, 11, 12, to where, and I'm not kidding, out of body experience. I'm, they call it traveling back in time. I don't want to call it that because that kind of scientific stuff. No, I saw this. My body laying on the bed and I'm up and I'm like, okay, I ain't gonna lie, it's scary. It makes you feel like, okay, am I, you know, you're not high. Let's just be honest. You know, you ain't drinking, you know, you ain't doing.